have new details just in from that shocking onstage altercation between Perry Farrell and Dave Navarro. With Perry Farrell lashing out at his bandmate, Navarro didn't do anything to him as we now know. This apparently, according to Farrell's wife, stemmed from hearing issues and Farrell was said to have been upset because the vocals weren't loud enough. So for reasons that were unclear, he took that out on Navarro. Of course, he has since issued a heartfelt apology to his bandmates. And you also have the rest of the band being truly devastated that their tour was canceled. You've got to think about this from a number of perspectives. Number one, the fact that they don't get to play for their fans on this tour is heartbreaking enough. But also these musicians are older and you really don't know when you're going to get another shot at going out on a big tour like that. And this is a dream that they've had for their entire lives. And, you know, you talk to these musicians 95% of them, this really does mean a lot to them and they're truly fans of the music and they just want to be a part of this community. So it's heartbreaking for them. You can tell they're truly devastated. And uh, But now we're getting new details about what went on backstage after this all went down from a very reliable source, none other than Dave Navarro's own guitar tech and best friend who's spoken at length about this in a podcast. We're going to go into some of that you also have Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor, who is certainly a veteran in the rock and metal world, who's been out there and certainly has had his share of dealing with internal squabbles with bandmates and anybody who is in a band is going to go through stuff like that. So he offers his expert perspective on that. He also knows Dave Navarro and talked about this on an excellent new episode of your mom's house podcast. Definitely check that full one out. It's a great episode, but here's what we're learning about what went on backstage in this crazy situation with Perry Farrell going off in front of the crowd. In a 90 minute podcast between Dan Cleary, the group's guitar and bass tech of over 17 years, and Todd Newman, a close friend of Dave Navarro for 30 years, the two gave a second by second account of the melee that happened on stage and what also went down behind the scenes, including revealing new details that we haven't heard until now. And as for why the two are speaking out, they say they felt compelled to speak about the incident after Perry Farrell's wife, Eddie Lau Farrell, released that statement, saying it all happened because her husband had reached his breaking point. But from their perspective, they maintain that Perry Farrell was already at a breaking point when the tour began. They said when Farrell was soberish, they were putting on some of their best shows in the band's history. Before the original four members reunited for the first time in 14 years, before that initial European leg of the tour, they agreed that the band would continue as a democracy. One of those decisions that was made is that the band just wants to be four guys on stage, no backup singers, no dancers, none of that. Old school music speaks for itself. And they said, I do know that there was immediate pushback from Perry on that issue. And so after that European leg, before the US leg of the tour kicked off, the subject was breached again. Apparently, Perry Farrell wanted dancers on video on the screen behind them, but the rest of the band voted no. They claimed that Perry Farrell had not even attended rehearsals for the tour and showed up a few hours before the start of the Las Vegas tour opener. It was just before that show that Farrell again mentioned having women dancing on screen behind them. They said that Farrell had video that he and his wife had filmed of some other women in the desert dancing, adding, the Farrell sort of couldn't let go of this thing to the point that before the first show, Perry quit the band. They then allege his wife, Eddie Lau Farrell, was, quote, out in this public area yelling about how Perry is going home and the tour is over. And this is in front of our Live Nation reps, who are the people that basically promote the tour and front the bill for the tour. And when they start hearing that people are going home before the first show, obviously they get very squirrely and very concerned. Continuing, they don't want to disappoint the fans, and they were a few hours away from showtime, so they collectively decided, well, we should just go and play anywhere. Any ideas were being thrown out, like, do we know any people who would know the songs that are in Vegas? Or do we just play instrumentally and say, if you know the words, sing along. We're having a problem with the lead singer. So they point out from the very beginning, that first show, right before the performance, Perry Farrell was allegedly threatening to quit the band. And you had that statement from Eddie Lau that made it seem like it was deep into the tour midway through that he finally became upset. Whereas you have these two other, 
close members in the camp alleging that from the very beginning, it seemed to be doomed. Now they go on to say that after all of this went down on the first day of the tour, things had been distant from them from that point forward and the tension just continued to build. They said Perry did kind of pull away from his bandmates and there were no joyful interactions, no talk. But even after that kind of weirdness, the band did continue to support Perry through the entire tour. If there was ever parts where he wasn't quite sure what part of the song they were in, they would go and say, here we are. If he had a great show, they were the first people to be like, that was effing awesome, you're amazing. There was some talk of the fight that ended up happening in Boston was brought on by sound issues on stage. And I have to push back on that in a big way because this one's tough to talk about because it has to do with are there other factors involved than just stage stuff? Now, it's at this point where they are alleging that Perry was messed up before the shows. They said they could tell earlier in the day and there was more than just this musician who was outraged by sound. I think as many people had speculated, including myself, other than that, and so you can tell very clearly that in the shows from the responses many fans have left in the comments that he was having some sort of issues and they go on to expound what their perspective is on what that might have been. They said, the three worst shows, this man was clearly f***ed up and we knew it from the moment we saw him earlier in the day. Now, one of the things that they point out is they say that while Perry Farrell has been seen drinking wine on stage, they don't believe that he's actually having a huge drinking problem. What they allude to though, is they say that they think there may be emotional issues as well as substances. They noted that he isn't drinking a shitload of wine on stage, but they believe emotional issues are a factor as well as possibly substances. And it was that fateful night in Boston where they said, quote, for the history of the band, it all fell apart in this moment. Perry is getting angrier and it's almost like when someone becomes a werewolf. The text says, I'm tuning a guitar when I see the push. Guitar comes right off and I make a beeline for both of these guys. And here's where it gets real sad. The tech becomes emotional at this point and he thought back to a time where he had to defend his mom and his sister as well growing up. And uh, just heartbreaking to hear that. And uh, you know, I just commend them for being as outspoken about this as they are. This is what he had to say about that moment where you see him coming out on stage and breaking up this altercation. He said, I love Dave and it felt like seeing a little kid getting bullied on the schoolyard for something he didn't do. And he's been through enough shit in his life and worked so hard to get back to this point. To see that happen just triggered something in me. I'm not gonna let this happen to this guy. Next they say at this point they're backstage and you have Dave Navarro clearly very upset about this is being consoled when Perry Farrell approaches him and strikes him backstage. That is not a detail that we had heard before. He says, eventually Dave walks up to ask what the F happens and Perry punches him again. So any of this talk of cheap shots, but I feel for him because something is going on mentally. He looked crazed, Clary said, no one's trying to villainize Perry. He did do this, and I know this band is over with, but I really do hope that he's able to figure things out. I think that Perry's apology that was posted on Instagram was heartfelt, and I know that for sure because I've checked in and I know that he's hurting. I feel if I could take that away, I'm sure we would all love to take that away. He's gonna go through that for a while, and it sucks, but I do hope he gets the help, and I appreciate all that he and Eddie have done and what the band has done. I just hate that at the moment, this is what Jane's is going to be known for. This ended on nobody's terms. It feels like losing someone in a car accident. And in a new interview on your mom's house podcast, you have Corey Taylor of Slipknot, of course, opening up about the situation. And again, as a musician, he is very well versed in this. And he shared a very good take on this. And he's just really concerned about the band as I think everybody is. Here's what he had to say. Corey said, it's sad, man, because I know both of them and Dave Navarro is one of the sweetest souls on the planet. Perry also is very sweet, man. He's never been anything but effing kind to me, and seeing that, I don't know what was happening there, and obviously, I don't wanna make assumptions, because I don't want it to get effing blown out. It looks, it could be chemical, it could be behavioral, it could be because they've known each other for 40 effing years, man. There's so many myths about their relationship. Who effing knows what that would be at this point? So I just hope Perry is okay. I hope Dave's okay. I mean, I reached out to him to see if he was. I texted Dave to see how he was doing. He hit me back. He was like, he's cool, 
But obviously, he doesn't want to say anything because right now, they're just trying to figure out what the F they're going to do. And in a statement from several days ago, Perry Farrell's wife, Eddie, she said that he was going to be seeking medical help for, I guess, some of the hearing issues that he had been dealing with as well, and also possibly a neurologist. So that is heartening to hear. And, you know, as for them expressing that Jane's addiction is over, you know, I hope that this isn't the end of their story. And I know that they're older musicians, but it would be really cool for them to actually close the chapter on good terms. While this is a very viral video and certainly a shocking incident, it also sets up a, a very beautiful comeback for them if they can overcome this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a physical dispute. And, you know, if they can take time and have Perry Farrell work through whatever it is that he has going on and get back to a, to a better place, this doesn't have to be the end of their story. And I would love to see them come back and be on top of the game again. But, you know, it, it needs to be from a healthy place. And so sending my thoughts and prayers out to the entire band. Uh, it's a it's very disappointing situation. I know they're all disappointed and hurt from this more than anyone could be. And it's just sad because it's such a talented band and such great musicians. And I've linked to that whole podcast down in the description. It's a very fascinating conversation. Be sure to check that out. And as always, that's your latest update here from Rockfeed. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on for the latest news and updates.